eat another home cooked meal right now. I'm gonna faint, okay? So. <laughs> I just like really was craving something take out -y. Oh, foodie, I know. It's hard to have to eat a home-cooked meal. That's hard stuff, and I know you never have very many takeaways, so I'm so glad that you're going to be rewarding yourself very shortly with a pizza party to celebrate having reached 100,000 subscribers and having that verified by YouTube. So, you know, a 4.30 a.m. pizza party. I think that's pretty, pretty good plan for somebody with unmanaged type 2 diabetes. But anyway, before I forget, let me introduce myself. My name is Ray, otherwise known as Life and Vine. And I'm coming from a beautiful apartment here in Kuwait today. And I am also a registered nurse licensed and certified here in the United States. And I wanted to also thank all the new subs to my channel. Thank you guys so much for joining and having interest in watching my commentary and thoughts and opinions on Foodie Beauty, Glitters and Lasers, Amberlynn Reed, and a host of other influencers and celebrities as they discuss their medical issues publicly. I want to thank all the people who still continue to subscribe to this channel. Thank you guys so much for helping me grow as I edge my way closer and closer to 2100 subs. And hopefully, we'll keep on growing. So thank you guys. Thank you so much. Just wanted to say thank you. But anyway, before I bore everybody away, Foodie is celebrating with a pizza party. She is celebrating her 100K everyday Miriam win, having bought those subs and also participated in a sub for sub YouTube channel. So that was pretty stellar. So without delay, let me not waste a second longer. Let me bring her on. Let me add her to the stage, Miss Foodie. <laughs> Make sure that she's at that 1.5 speed. She is. All right, guys. Without delay, let's just get her started. See what she has to say today. I understand she does make a couple of pit stops out of here. So we are going to be, we're probably going to be like hurrying her along a little bit. But she does talk about her diabetes type 2. And so I'm always interested in that. Okay. Well, that's the first sign that Salal doesn't obviously share the fruit juice with her. <laughs> uh, unless I hope she tells him that she drinks straight from the bottle, because usually when you share the home with somebody, and even if you don't, drinking out of the bottle, well, maybe you do. You know, that's that's your prerogative if you live alone. But doing it on camera when you say you live with a husband. And when you're a type 2 unmanaged diabetic, having just fruit juice is not a good plan at all. I would say nix the fruit juice. Just just get away from the fruit juice, please. Too young. <laughs> Dear Renee, you're always first. It's an accomplishment. Hey, Kara. Amy Thor, and that's not playing. Hello, hi Tiffany, Katrina, pizza. Somebody put it in my mind, and I'm like, okay, pizza celebration it is. <laughs> Bubbles and marshmallows. Hi, Wine's Trends, Nostu, and Tangerine. Oh, what the heck is that? Oh, hello, Bubbles. Hi, Millie. Thank you, Beezer, Tian Moonshine, Brandy. So, Salah was supposed to have some with me, but he's sleeping, so I put his aside. Nosferatu. Hi, Kitty Charms, Muffalo. Oh, okay. Hey, what a probably put a poll out there asking whether or not we think Salau is sleeping, whether there's pizza put aside for Salau, or whether Foodie just going to eat all that, that lovely pizza all to herself. Oh, pizza, middle of the night. Who's delivering at this hour? That's what I want to know. Hi, me pizza. 
Yum, Heather, yeah. Check this out. It has a ranch on it. Pepperoni. Paulette, hello, Polly Dolly. Oh my god. There's pizza places open 24 hours, Brenda. Mac and cheese, yum. Oh, okay. Well, she explains that. 24 hour pizza places. Great for an unmanaged type 2 diabetic. And not only is it just white bread, processed meat, cheese, sodium. She's also had to make sure she has, but roughly looks about one or two tablespoons of ranch dressing on a single slice of pizza. So, yeah, yeah, that's uh, not a good start. Thank you, Vera. The slices for you guys. All right, let's eat it this middle. Not a good start. Oh, gosh. No way. Uh, well, <laughs> at least you got a napkin. You know how I feel about that. Did you like it, Muff? All right, tomorrow we're going to go on a diet. I'm serious. I'm going to try again tomorrow. Thank you, DFS. Uh, no, she is probably not going to try again tomorrow, except another takeout place. So the eyes kind of shifting back and forth kind of make you think she's kind of lying when she made that statement. So she has no real interest in managing her health at all. So, I mean, at this point, I think just sheer honesty to the audience would be better than trying to suggest that you are making strides in your health because it's pretty apparent you aren't. Pretty apparent you aren't. Oh, thank you, Katie. How's she eating that pizza, girl? I know it looks so good, huh? <clears throat> it's slapping. The pepperoni here? Hello. It doesn't taste any different. Hi, Brandy. Thanks, Paulette. Your toast, Kelly. We're going to start Monday. Oh. Better food than the hospital. Hi, Trevanda. As long as you keep going. I don't know if we're going to watch all of it because it's a pretty long video to react to. But uh, oh yeah, <laughs> she she always got her eyes up in the air, looking shifty. I think these are pretty much all the things that her doctor, her diabetes doctor, she likes to call them, the endocrinologist, <laughs> as she refers to it, would not want her to eat. It's. All the things like white bread, it's cheese, with salt, it's all of these things and processed meats. So she knows what she's up to. I think that she doesn't understand that the medications that she takes are to be taken and you are supposed to modify your diet and change your habits of exercise, i.e. you're supposed to start exercising. And she has not made any of these lifestyle adjustments. And so her prognosis of her health improving and her blood sugars improving with these medications is probably negligent at this point. Yeah. Hi, Bailey. Thank you. Laura, you want a bite? <laughs> mm-hmm. Pepperoni, cheese, and ranch. Aline, you've made a huge accomplishment. Thank you so much. I'm happy. I'm really happy to have you guys. Can you know? Kitty, yay. <laughs> Hi, Salvaio. And that eyes are watery. Salva fell asleep waiting for the pizza. Oh. For my next slice. Pizza. <laughs> a little bit. I can't show you, Julia. Turn the camera around because I have all my Ramadan decorations that I don't want to show you guys until we have them set up. Two hundred day. Wow. Sorry, Bailey. <laughs> Hi, Rylan. Thank you. My other girl, Julia. She's so sweet. Okay, just while her face is a little bit close up, uh, one thing I always think about is that there were only a approximately, I guess at any given time, a hundred people watching her 100K celebration. 
And so it doesn't seem as if it was a very exciting pizza party for somebody with 100K. You would think that she would have, especially with how much she live streams, have a pretty strong live stream audience. But since she is all about gaslighting her audience around her health, as she just eats her way through huge amounts of takeouts after having said she's going to cook all these other meals. I think people just get bored. I think people just get bored of being told nonsense and lies over time. And she laughs and giggles because I think she thinks she's getting one over on everybody. The other thing I wanted to point out is that She's been, I guess, up for a while because she had a number of different videos come out and they make me think that she was pretty much taping most of what's going on. One, I think she probably taped while she was waiting for the pizza and then when the pizza came, she then taped uh, this particular live stream video so she's been up for a little bit of time so i don't think those are marks from the cpap on the face she's always got this very inflamed looking redness there that i tell you has a very distinct butterfly hallmark that looks very similar to the ones that you would see with somebody with lupus arrhythmia and so I just wonder with her sometimes. Hi, Candace. Thank you, Ashley's World. Rebe, thank you, guys. Thank you all. This type of thing should be celebrated with you guys because you got me here, right? Without you guys. You know? We'll slide out easy. But I do watch all your mukbangs. I've been watching you since almost the beginning. I'm going to say you're amazing. Thank you, Elaine. That means a lot. It really does. I'm sorry, Archer lady. I get it. Eating videos are not for everyone. Seriously. Creepy comfort. Hi. Sick and in and out of hospital. Haven't, haven't been on with you. Oh, I hope you're okay, Tiffany. I wish you well. I hope my babies are sick. 33 months. Ladies and babies. Don't ever explain yourself. Once again... Just to return and circle back around to the constant references to sciatica that Foodie loves to make and that I am contesting because she has not actually been diagnosed by anybody. She has not had an MRI. She does not participate in physical therapy. Any of the things, modalities that she speaks of are not remin uh matching to sciatica at all but more to somebody potentially trying to manage peripheral neuropathy particularly in the legs uh, or potentially a uh injury down there but potentially more neuropathy but she is waving her arms in the air again in the chair she is not grimacing she sits for pretty much extended periods of time. She does get up, obviously, because it seems that she goes to the restroom. Uh, and so the thoughts of her having sciatica, I think, are probably dubious, to say the least. Brenda, what did you do in between? Mm. Hi, Marbles. The Ramadan song? Yeah, I wanted to sing it for my video. Thank you, Lois. Oh, and she has pickles. Kung Fu Panda? Did you guys hear Jack Black singing, um, hit me a bit? Oh, you like olive tongues, you like the olive VVs. When I was a kid, I called them olive VVs. Here, here. Oh, they're olives. I'm going to put extra olives on my pizza because, um, they never put it out. <laughs> my loneliness in the lonely of Canada. Honestly, they have a lot of fat okay, olives. I need fruit in the fridge. <laughs> so maybe you want to be cautious. Oh, and that fruit juice, girl. <laughs> That's a lot of sugar. Why? I think she wants to become bed bound. Ramadan, Ramadan. I seriously yeah. think she. Thanks, guys. I can't wait to share the vlogs with you guys. Maybe you would have uh, laughed so much at him explaining properly what DBage is. Hi, Tracy. Here we go. I just cannot believe 
that she is all these extra toppings on this pizza. I mean, I can. All right, don't get me wrong. I can believe Foodie putting extra toppings on her food because she needs to dress everything up. And my concern always is that adding these extra condiments, the ketchup, which again is extra sugars, the olives are more fats. That's probably beyond a portion of olives. And she's going to keep adding it to each slice of pizza as she goes along. That's a lot of extra calories. And she is somebody not physically active. She didn't leave the apartment to go pick this pizza up. She had it delivered for sure to the home. Salal didn't even seem to go and get the pizza. He was sleeping, supposedly. So they have a delivered pizza to the house after they had hauled all those groceries. And one of the things I was thinking about, because there's been indication that it could potentially have come from a subsidized or welfare type grocery service and the barcode was discovered on one of the packages that indicated it may come from something of that nature and that makes me think as to why these groceries are so cheap for foodie is because she's getting them subsidized and so she just cannot resist the bargain of it but then she wastes everything because she doesn't really know how to cook she doesn't want to how have any idea or teach herself how to cook anything there the vegetables go to waste and she is far more content and as you saw at the start of this video she hates to cook at home she hates it this is what makes her happy thank you ava thanks laura does someone gift memberships when marbles just know i can't see because whenever someone gifts for some reason on the mobile now i can't see it um Melly. Oh, God. <laughs> Thank you, Queen. Wow, Rebe Marbles. Who else got one? Thank you, Rebe. You're so sweet, really. She called New Zealand, my queen. Hi, Island Dragonfly. What's wrong with my mouth today? Can of olive for each slice. No, Brenda. She steaks subs are so good. I think the worst part is, is that you are talking and eating and the food is still masticating and moving in your mouth. And that's really unpleasant for anybody to have to see. So, and then you move yourself closer up to the camera so people can really see it. So who is that for? What audience is that catered? We all have our suspicions that Part of your audience may be people that we call feedies, people who like to watch people eat, people get bigger as they eat, people eat fast food, load it up like this, have it all drizzling around the face, licking the fingers. And so there's always a suspicion, and this content is very suspicious with this pizza party. I love them. If the steak is tough, ugh. Miss Craft, I got verified. My channel is verified now. <laughs> I'm celebrating. My small life achievement. Anchovies, huh? Beat it. I'm starting again tomorrow, Blue Pot. The last pizza. Hi, Liz. Thanks, Creepy. I would actually be quite a wealthy woman if I had a dollar for every time she said that she's going to start her health journey because she says it every video. And she releases yeah. three a day. I'm going to have one more pizza. I know I say that. And I sound like a fool. But I really have to. You know what I was going to make to eat tonight if I didn't order pizza and subs? Chicken liver. <laughs> Chicken liver. Oh, 
Oh, oh it's a hamburger been... Millie's on my, on my PC. My Academy Award. Thank you, Brandy. No, you can't have my ranch. All right, Elaine, I'll send you a piece. It's 4.30 a.m. there every day, Miriam girl. Thank you, Chantel's red wig. 4.30 a.m. I know. It's my breakfast. Pizza for breakfast. Breakfast of champions. <laughs> I make it good, though. Yeah, it's, they have stuff for us. Hi, Ryan. They are up. Brenda, who gifted Brenda? Melly and Sunny Colin. Thank you. Pizza for breakfast. <laughs> Charles Reed. So generous. Thank you, Melly. You are clean. No, it's hot, but it's warm. So Lala loves chicken livers, yeah. I'll just leave that there. It's popular here. You stir fry them yeah. with a bunch of spices so they don't taste like liver. <laughs> Breakfast pizza. I love hot wings. I wish I got wings, but all she ever talks about is food. All she ever thinks about is food. All she ever does is eat food. She talks about health journeys that she's never going to start. Her health is deteriorating, and I think it's just obvious that. She is never going to change. So it is going to be shown that, Chantel, yes, you are a fool. You're a fool. <laughs> Yum, DFS. Ryan, my Friday's going okay. How was yours? So today was a very bad diet day. Tell us how. Yeah. I'm starting again tomorrow, Blue Pot. Thanks, Laura. That's sweet. Yeah, I, have, I should have a tick by my name now. Can I get a dollar for every time she just says, I'm going to start tomorrow? Just in this video? Start again tomorrow? Start again what? I have not yet seen her take one health journey of any significance at all. I mean, just any. Let's just, just let's be, just, let's just call it what it is. Uh, for me as a healthcare professional, do I believe that Chantel has done anything since I've seen her content back in really paid attention since Canada? No, she's not, maybe nothing. I'm sorry, just one meal in the day of two other bad meals? does not make a change. So there's barely any exercise at this point. I mean, she has decided to put that to, to an absolute end with the sciatica, supposedly. And you could, if you could see me, I'd be putting the little speech marks around that. Thanks, Brooke. Well, my blood sugar is like... Uh-oh, now she got juice on the face. Oh, there I only start feeling sick when it gets to like maybe 23 or something, but it hasn't been like that because of my medication. Okay. We need to talk about the blood sugar because she's about to show a blood sugar that is still extremely high. So a simple way, if you want to convert Chantel, if you're here in the United States, her 23 to what would be that blood sugar here in the United States is to, when we use the MG to the DL, is just to multiply that number by 18. So that that's the easiest way. If you want to get really exacting about it, you would multiply it by 18.0182 if you want to get really exacting. So if she's comfortable at a blood sugar of 23, Let's see what that would calculate. That means that Chantel is comfortable or not comfortable, but this is where she feels that her emergency situation or that maybe she needs to scale it back, which is where she got to in Canada, which means that the meals that we saw in Canada were just probably a fraction of what she was consuming. 
414.4186 milligrams to a DL would be 23 mole over a liter, as she calls it. I think it's millimeter of oscillatile liter or something. I don't know what that is an acronym for, so I just made that up. But anyway, that's a simple way. So anytime, if you're here in the United States and you're not familiar with that conversion scale, just simplest way is just multiply it by 18, and that will give you a pretty rough idea of where she is in our calculations that we tend to use. <laughs> Hi, Teardrop. How are you? It's not really where you guys are, though, eh? I know all the fresh groceries. I'm going to eat them, don't worry. I don't walk up beat. Just look up your food. Uh-uh. <laughs> the lowest it's been is like eight. Hey, Sylvia. I didn't make the pizza, no. So if it were as low as eight, so if you were to do it simply, it would be eight by 18. But if we wanted to be a little bit more exact thing, it would be 144. Now, we don't know if that's when she wakes up first thing in the morning and that's a fasting blood sugar. We don't know the real authenticity of the equipment that she uses to test her blood sugar, how good she is with her technique. It's difficult to tell with Chantel. That would be, though, eight would be 144 here in the US for those more familiar with uh, the milligrams over DL. That would be what her conversion would be at eight. If she legitimately had eight. Thanks, Wayana. 743. Doesn't all that junk food in your meds make you uncontrollable? Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> all the time. All the time, that would be uncontrollable. I'll make the chicken livers tomorrow. <laughs> Hi, Carrie Lynn. I think Beep obviously like wants me to be well, but they just, they know that I know what I need to do, you know? Mm. I haven't eaten Taco Bell since Blue Pot. Hey, Coriana, we're celebrating me being a verified channel. I don't think Taco Bell is going to make a difference at the moment, foodie. You're sitting here eating a pizza. Probably worse than the Taco Bell. I don't know. They're all terrible. It's all takeout. You've no control over the sodium levels. You look, your hands look extremely swollen. Your face has been swollen on one side for an extended period of time. Somebody wanted to know. I mean, I've had all sorts of ideas getting popped into the comments, but... Keep going. Keep explaining how you're not having problems with your blood sugar. Because I need to see a hemoglobin A1C. Pine berries, Honeybrook? What? But pizza places are always expensive. I know what you're about. Queen Melly, what a quote. I don't think she's making that much. Of get more people? Is that a missing? If somebody does, oh, let me know, please. <laughs> Oh, Nelly, who got the gift? Thank you, Lois. Thanks, Nitty. Okay, Blue, it's okay. We're going to have more content. <laughs> April Dawn. Oh, congrats. Thank you, Nelly. Very peachy. <laughs> oh. turning 25. Embrace it. Embrace it. I don't want to say the name of the pizza place, JRF, because people will harass it. No, they won't. Why would we want to harass a bit? probably stop showing labels and things. Oh, well, that would be nice. So, well, well. It's just a, it's called a supreme pizza. They call it like, anything mixed <clears throat> with sausage and green peppers and olives. They call it supreme. Supreme diabetes. Supreme spike in blood sugar. Beyond GFS. That sounds good. <laughs> Meep what? Hi, easy. 
Hey, my dog. I don't think she can read the chat very well with her eyes. What she doesn't reason? have glasses anymore. Was Julia in the background? I didn't notice. I didn't notice you because, 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 because I was having pizza and I didn't notice you because, 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 because. Thanks, Fried Farts. Jackie, hi. Hi, Dirty. I've used the bathroom actually. Well, see, she ran off to have to go use the restroom. Did you not think to go to the restroom before you started recording your video, young lady? That's pretty wild that she would just go off and run off to the restroom. But hey, it happens. It happens. It happens. So she's been talking for. About 18 minutes. This has been going on for about 20. And this time we have seen her eat two slices of pizza with extra toppings. She is an unmanaged type 2 diabetic who is trying to convince her audience that she has control of these blood sugars. She is gaslighting them as always that she is going to get better the next day. She has grabbed something from the kitchen or wherever as she comes back in. Uh, it's just all pretty much the same as we always see. Let's see if we can learn anything new now that she's returned. Otherwise, we're going to just speed this up because I don't think that this is worth covering everything. Because I think she just smokes a lot of shisha after this. And that's pretty irritating. Even to her audience. Just bad. Yeah, I ate a lot today. Why are you eating? You might, Shelly. Mm, that sounds good, Cheryl. Go bottle girls. With theater, po theater popcorn is hard to resist, eh? For popcorn lovers, <clears throat> I get the nachos. Weird. So it's just eat, say hey. It's emotionally, yeah. But I feel the process. Why has she got tears out of her eyes? Why has she got this wet out of oh, her yeah. eyes? Anyway. Saved more than half herself pizza. Oh, I don't know if you can see, but she, she's got all this. Is that tears coming out because it was spicy? Did she say it was Pete's that she put on that pizza? Somebody made her eyes water. We always get like half and half. I'm making shisha. This is my last shisha. I don't know what's going on about shisha. I really love it so much. Oh, gosh. That's what she grabbed. Ingredients to make the shisha. Which I understand is equivalent one smoke or a cup to a lot of cigarettes. And if she has any type of heart problems, having worked as a cardiac nurse for many, many years, I would not recommend smoking shisha because it can also lead to plaque buildup in the coronary arteries leading to the heart muscle, potentially could help increase the risk for a coronary event like a acute myocardial infarction. And she also is not managed with her diabetes. That leads to dyslipidemia. That leads to also these atherosclerotic plaque buildups, leading also to a higher risk of a coronary event. I believe she thinks she's just going to become glamorously bedbound and that she will have people waiting on her hand and foot, caring for her, sympathizing. Oh, poor Chantal, she doesn't feel good. She has to stay in bed. And she just kind of eats herself to this condition. And I don't know whether or not 
how much sympathy there really is for people who are not even trying to seek treatment for controlling their eating and they show their habits and their addictions to their audience online. And unless they are people that are also similar and also struggle with the same and feel comforted watching another person do what they also know is their bad habits leading to potentially poor health and not being managed, they feel comfort in numbers. And also other people who watch, who are people that enjoy watching people just eat and get bigger. There's all sorts of interesting dynamics because I can't imagine that for the most part, anybody who's here to manage their health, illnesses, diabetes, any of these types of comorbidities that come along with somebody as obese as Chantel would get anything from her content because she is slapping them in the face and ruining any of their potential progress with her content. And she doesn't trigger one, of course. It's really disgusting, actually, in my opinion. I'm just gonna say it. Okay, what should I drink? The most popular forms of pizza here are margarita, but for them, margarita is just plain cheese. There's like no basil or anything on it. Um, like to me, margarita pizza has like basil and you know, I don't know what's, you know what I mean. Wow, DFS. No, I'm not crying. Are you feeling stressed? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> but I always feel stressed when I have to like make important changes in my life or do something, you know, that involves me getting out of my comfort zone. You know what it is? I feel like. <clears throat> She's sweating. She's just sweating so from the cheese sweats. I just feel like I have a lot of like um, things to do. I'm not used to doing a lot of. Teardrop. Oh, thank you, sweetie. You didn't have to do that. Thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate it. Congrats. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it, Teardrop. I appreciate your presence so much. You cheated on your diet with Firehouse Subs. Um, what kind of sub do you like there? What did I cook? I showed it in my video. I made breakfast. Um, I made, I had overnight oats. As I said, it is with people who also are not being very consistent with their own need for lifestyle changes. And I think there's a comfort in numbers for some of the people who watch her content, but they are just enabling each other. So if I were somebody that I knew I was struggling seriously with trying to manage and, and take care of my health, because it's about your health at the end of the day, you can talk about all the positivity that comes along with not wanting to be ashamed about someone's size. And I can understand that. But when it comes to somebody Chantel size who's not noticing that she's visibly sweating on camera in front of her audience and is saying she's not crying and that she doesn't even feel this water on her face, it just makes you question, why are these people watching it? Well, because they don't have a history of probably doing very well either. Comfort in numbers, they say. I love those. Thank you, Teardrop. Um. Yeah, like just being like a domestic goddess, like I said, <laughs> you know, taking care of the house. Um, like if you look up in culturally, like, you know, Arab homes or Muslim Arab homes, you know, the woman has certain roles and do it like stuff like that. And like Salah is very open minded, so minded, so he's very lenient and he's very helpful. Okay. I would have thought, Chantel, that part of that custom potentially is cooking, a traditional roles at the home women often are cooking and i don't see you doing a great deal of cooking <laughs> as you complain about having to make food at home so where is this fantasy going again girl oh take us on the fantasy but we know this is not what you're this is not the truth that you're living all right hurry up i don't want to say that but he has his own responsibilities and things like you know <clears throat> So, yeah, it's just been, like, weird for me to be in that. I've always been, like, the one who's always, like, I've just been so, used to being so independent and just, like, worrying about myself and just, like, you know. And I feel like now I have, like, a house. It's, like, my household, my kitchen, and I have to take care of it and take care of my home and stuff and, you know, take care of a husband. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? My place looks very nice. Thanks, I try. My kitchen's a bit of a disaster since the rice pudding tobacco, but the pot is soaking. Domestic goddess, yeah. 
are there some pillows missing? <laughs> There's a theory that she moves pillows around so that people don't question her about the pillows. At least Julia looks comfortable. Ah, she just gets into the domestic goddess fantasy. Okay, Chantel, just keep living your fantasy, girl. We love hearing it. Domestic goddess. <laughs> Do you want me to test my blood sugar right now? I will. <laughs> it's not a joke, but... Oh, God. Oh, garlic sauce. Hasn't really kicked in the pizza six. yet, so it's not really... Hi, Ghostface. Mahaba Allen was selling. Weight loss. Mm. Real ho. That is what's making the whole rest of my life hard. That's what makes keeping up with housework. I keep going outside to get things. Like, even shopping today to get these Ramadan things. I was like, oh. I don't know if it's because I'm taking so many NSAIDs. Like, Olfin is like the clonophag. And it makes me feel, I don't know about anyone else if they've taken this, but it's like an anti-inflammatory, but it's super strong. But it's also an analgesic. And it actually works on numbing my, the pain in my leg for a long time. Like, right now, I don't feel it. Mashallah. And like, I know I could say, oh, I'm going to change tomorrow. I'm gonna... I think I've looking at the tablets also have sodium. So I certainly would be cautious taking divalcanate sodium tablets if you are eating so much sodium in your meal. Just be aware of that. An analgesic is just a pain reliever. This is a, it's just a fancy word for pain relief. That's all an analgesic means. Don't get all fancy with it. And as I said, too, that if you're taking long-term NSAIDs and you have any type of heart complaint, that's not advisable. So whichever doctor prescribed you to be long-term on fluconate sodium is obviously not aware that you have cardiac issues, which I would be surprised that they didn't. So I, it's just like, then you take blood pressure. It's just like, it's, they're all counteracting each other. You've not got any type of maintenance or control at this point. But I think the tablets, if they're anything like the topical, I believe they have sodium in them too, girl. So just be cautious. And no, they're not going to wipe you out like that. That's the diabetes type two, not managed. I change tomorrow. so easy to say. And then when I wake up, I panic. I'm like, oh, <laughs> like a huge baby. Like, I, like, no matter how much therapy I need or whatever, I have to make a change now. So I really, really have to try again tomorrow, guys. It makes, does it make me feel out of it? It makes me feel a bit dizzy. Yeah. Not like out of it brain fog, but let's go prank him. Hello, Bali. A three pieces of dumb chocolate. Yeah, dumb chocolate is so creamy. Okay, what should I have? Should I have this? Um, no name brand? No. Arabic brand, three in one. Instead of Nescafe. Laura Secor hot chocolate. Or instant Arabic coffee. Hi, it's a crying shame. That's awful being dizzy. Yeah. Won't Ramadan and Iftar make it harder? No, I'm hoping it'll be easier because it'll be such a routine, you know, like a forced routine. And I have to really try to, you know, last year I did it, but like Salah was not having me stray. So <laughs> like I can't eat, like I wouldn't eat in front of, you know, but I really didn't have that much trouble because we can have Zahor. You have a big breakfast and you're not even that hungry. for so if Oh, and just another thing, Chantel. If you have any type of liver impairment, and I understand that you do have non-fatty alcoholic liver disease, or sorry, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, if I said that incorrectly, I apologize. It says that uh, you should be cautious with patients with liver impairment and that to discontinue immediately. So I hope as you take this oral therapy that you are being monitored for your liver panels because I would think it would be counterindicated for you then. Um, it is also taken as a pain relief and then... It may cause a little bit of dizziness. That could be an adverse reaction. And so I think if you are getting dizziness, I would definitely follow up with the provider who prescribed that to you and let them know and find out how your liver's doing too because it doesn't seem that that would be a good 
medication for you to take with concerns of the liver. Just just as a little heads up, there you go. Sorry, no. That's free, yeah. free from me. Oh, well. Yeah, Lois. Hey, Sophia Rose. Don't get behind you. My chocolate and water. I was thinking about milk. You missed the pizza. Great. More oh, milk. My God. <gasps> I'm going to cry. That's such a good idea. Melissa, happy birthday to your son. I could have an exception because of like diabetes and, you know, binge eating, but I was able to do it last year. So I think I can do it this year. Yes. Plus, honestly, the, like, I just feel like my blood sugars improve when I fast, you know? Yeah. But I'll be like wired, chocolate and coffee. Well, let's see how you do this year, because I think you probably have more insulin resistance this year than you did last year. So you may be under the assumption that this fasting is beneficial for you, but any registered dietitian, anybody who would work with somebody who's as unmanaged as you are with type 2 diabetes, would probably strongly advise you against it. But you are very strong-minded in what you're going to do, and you're just going to do it anyway. So go compromise your health, Chantel. Tell, you, tell, tell everybody about how it improves your health instead. Who's Mr. B? You don't have to fast if you have diabetes. We need our time. I know, Robin, but that's why. Come say hi. It's not impressive, though. You're not impressing anybody. That's the difficulty. Oh, she's off to get more shisha stuff? Okay. All right. Let me move her along then. But yeah, I wouldn't think that she... Th I think she believes that she is impressing people with this as a sign of martyrdom. I know that's more of a Catholic terminology, but I think it would be kind of how Chantel is thinking that, oh, you know, I'm doing this fact. I just, it's content. It's just foolhardy on her part. I'm not surprised. She is an irresponsible person when it comes to managing her health. Okay, let's see how, let's speed her along. Thank goodness she kind of disappears because at least we can move her along for a minute. God. Okay, she gets this cat thing out. Let's see how she moves with this. Oh, she doesn't move well. Just watch her move around and sit in the chair and stuff. Oh, my gosh. This is supposed to be for Hal, but he climbs it, so. <laughs> the hands Julia likes it. Julia, the cat likes it. Probably feels protected in it. Probably feels like she maybe can get away. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that place is tiny. Well, that thing is huge. I guess she was thinking she could make content with it. And then the hamster just was getting out like a child. I don't even know what that's designed for. Gosh. That's just because he. Oh gosh, a thing with the bathroom? Jeez. Okay, girl. Let me move you along then. I guess Julia. Well, Julia's cute. Let's see what Julia does for a second, just because Julia's adorable. Oh, hey, Julia. What'd you have to, girl? Aren't you cute? Aren't you cute? Oh, looks like she wants to try to get in there. All right. Well, at least Julia got something to do. All right. Well, that's nice to see. Chantel off to the bathroom again, though. Wow. Julia, uh, uh, there we go. Look who gets in there. Look at that. That's kind of fun. Oh, well, she's having a good time. All right. Well, oh, she's playing with it. Oh, that's cute, Julia. Oh, God. Here comes Chantel. Okay. Sweating in the eyeballs again. I need to remember how I feel. Okay. Oh, my goodness. All right, girl. Okay. At this point, oh, she God, just gets the shisha going. The shisha is extremely annoying. And so we're going to kind of move her along it's not a litter box. because at around an hour and 40, I want to say, Good morning, girl. Hi. 
the chat begins to complain yeah, about cheese. this cheese sugar. I, I don't know if she does her blood sugar. Hold on. I think she does her blood sugar. Let's get to the blood sugar. Hold on. Let me see if I can find the blood sugar because most of this that she talks about. Okay, hold on, guys. I'm going to do my blood sugar. Oh, here we go. I'm sorry for talking over her. Apologize. I was just thinking my thoughts out loud. I need more of these lancets. Okay, so I have to get some of those. All right. I always want to point out that Chantel does not do a clean technique when she takes her blood sugars. So the technique should be alcohol wipe, wipe the finger, squeeze a little bit of blood out. The alcohol, ethanol has a little bit of sugar. Wipe that first blood drop away and then squeeze a little bit more blood. And then with the second drop, that's the one that you want to use to get a more accurate reading of your blood sugar. I think she has a terrible technique. And so I just always want to highlight that. <laughs> No, I'm going to say I'm feeling okay. I'm kind of full now, Georgia girl. Oh, company is exhausting. I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to be, um, I need more of these too. I'm just going to have to go to the pharmacy. I'm going to be, um, worrying about that soon, yeah. I'd enjoy the presents though. No, I don't want, I'm full. I don't want to finish the, hey, Blondie Bar, so. Cassidy, thank you. Oh, hair out. I don't think I saw her clean her finger at all. So just as a aside, and I'm not surprised with Chantel because she, and she just had her hands all over the pizza. And I know she went to the restroom and you just hope she washed her hands. So that's all I can say. But you still want to try to use an alcohol wipe just in case. If the wipes are expensive to purchase, then you could probably purchase cotton and alcohol and just use that. But something, the alcohol will get the finger clean for that. So I wouldn't just do what Chantel did. It's not recommended. 13.3. Okay. Now she just ate that pizza. So that blood sugar has not had time to really get into the bloodstream. So that food is still waiting to come into her body. 13.3 is pretty high, I want to say. And that was probably between a break of eating for her. And we, like I said, her technique terrible. So that's 239.6421. So pretty much you could round it up to 240. She just ate that pizza. So that pizza is not being reflected in that 240 milligram per DL. That is going to spike up. So she says that she concerns herself at around 23 well, probably not far off in an hour, probably two hours, I would say would be a better time to check for that blood sugar. Because if you were checking somebody for insulin resistance, then you probably, well, you should only want to have 75 grams of carb, and I'm sure she may have eight more than that. But two hours after that consumption of food, then you want to check the blood sugar. And you want to make sure she then, like, cuts everything out, you know, like, stops eating after this point, stops snacking. Even the shisha is going to increase the blood sugars probably. So, because I think there is a link between the smoking and the increase in blood sugars at that time. So I think that's part of the reason why they ask you not to smoke before you go in to a test. Because I think it can alter how your numbers are read. And this hasn't even kicked in yet. So my interest would be to actually see these blood sugars two hours from now. Not now, that's too soon. And that's still really high. 
That means she's going to get to that scary 23. More than likely. Well done, Chantel. Well done, girl. <clears throat> Which is kind oh. of nice. Good job for your pancreas. My eyes are sweaty. Little, little Creek, thank you. Okay, what do you think? What do you guys think? Oh. Be honest with me. You, you don't have to be, you know, I won't hate you. I want you to be honest. You don't think that I'm going to let you know, when you start to see people sweat like that, that's part of the heart not working well. When I used to have patients with their heart conditions, that sweating, that's a cardiac sign. That's classic. She's not gone out anywhere. She's not exercised at all. She is glistening. Even with the filters, we can see it coming through. You can see it coming down her eyeball. I believe that is a sign that she started to have some type of heart issue going on. I hate to say it, but it's very indicative. Very indicative. Then I can do a six-pack arc to you. It's just this green blue pot. I mean, I don't know for sure, but no. No, that's the sign of a cardiac issue. Thanks, Willow Creek. One more to me. Thank you. Hope you're having a great Saturday. Ah. Day. Thank you. One more to me. Thank you for the super chat. Blood pressure hurts. Thank you. You'll never have a six pack. Six pack. I think I will. I think I will. Yeah, I got to get the mine right. That's the problem. It is high up. I'm just curious after I eat how much it is. Fasting, it's usually 8, 8.5, between 8 and 10. That's too soon after you eat, Chantel. You need to wait two hours, then check your blood sugar. You haven't had time to even digest that meal. So how would you know that's reflective of anything? So that's inaccurate. 50-pound arc before six pack. I know, I have to start slow. Oh, I'm impatient. <laughs> Millie. <laughs> it's not reasonable, yeah. Okay, here's how I would have to get a six pack. First, I would have to nail the weight loss, lose all the weight, get skin removal surgery on my tummy, and then like you'll see it. I just have to do a whole bunch. I used to have an ab master it was ab or ab roller. I want to get one. I saw one on Timu. Yeah, I know common really. I guess if you want to go to a clinic that doesn't care if you are going to really recover or if you're safe for surgery then I guess you could get weight loss surgery. But if you were to go to any other place where they are going to ensure that you would have a successful surgery and that you can mentally handle the weight loss and the changes that you're going to need to make in your lifestyle in order to maintain that weight loss, then you are a long way away from that. Because usually they have to actually give you psychological evaluations to make sure that you can change your lifestyle with your diet, restrict the food, because when the weight loss surgery is completed, you have to make huge dietary changes. They have to also make sure that you they have you slim down on a liquid diet beforehand so that you can get as thin as possible. So you take as little strain from your heart. You're going to have to get a cardiac catheterization. Make sure you don't have any blockages around your coronary arteries so that you don't have a heart attack under anesthesia. You are a long way from just popping onto some weight loss surgery. You are a long way from that. It just shows that you have not even spoken to one person anywhere about starting that type of journey. And you would need to get probably like some type of gastric surgery, but you would have to make the lifestyle changes first and you are unable to do so. You gaslight your audience every day. You lie to them constantly and you have blood sugars that are starting to show insulin resistance. And you are deluded in thinking that having this holy month to fast, especially when you eat in the middle of the night and the types of foods you choose to eat, is suddenly going to change your health around. Because I think it's actually going to make your health worse. 
But you'll find that out. <laughs> Georgia girl. Sex appeal. Hello. Good to see you. Me too. Do a bodybuilder arc. <laughs> I quite an I'll give Muslim bodybuilders. That's not true. <laughs> Creepy comfort. Oh, thank you. More for the glasses fund, but I never got yet. Thank you. Congratulations. Gotta go. Good night. Thank you so much, Creepy. You're the best. Thank you. <laughs> Say hi to Danny. Thank you. Thank you. The deep HS exercise. Don't tell it can be done. Thanks, Golden Girl. I think it can be, but is it likely? We'll see. They have gyms here. I joined one, but I went three times. Gotta stop smoking. It's the getting there that's hard, you know. Stop smoking the seashore. Good night, Beezer. <laughs> Hi, Lady J. This is my last. Okay, guys, I don't know. Should this be my last shisha? I love it. It's like part of my routine. It's like cold, lemony, minty air. I don't feel any tobacco. That's why it's dangerous because you smoke more than cigarettes. But do you love breathing? I don't love it, but I have to do it. That's a strange statement. I wonder if Shisha will like. Yeah, you're right. I have asthma. The pool. Yes, Golden Girl. My pool will be filling up soon. Well, thanks, Georgia Girl. Hi, Megan. I became a member. Welcome, Megan Bernard. Ready, set, bees. Ready, set, bees. <laughs> All right, I think it's at 140 that her audience yeah, complains. Yeah. Hold on. I'm going to stop. All right. She really doesn't. So she just goes on and on. And I don't think she talks much more. Well, she probably talks intermittently about her health. But I want to say it's around a minute and 40 that her audience asks her to lay off the shisha on her live videos. And I would recommend that you are starting to look very diaphoretic in your videos at this moment, Chantel. And that has me really concerned that you're actually going to have like a cardiac event. So I don't know if you're checking your blood pressure regularly. I have no idea. But anyway, let me move along. It was says I don't stay on track, but let me move up. I believe it's around here. And then we'll finish her out because... This is getting very long, this uh, reaction. I feel like I don't want to go out myself because I'm so used to, you know, <laughs> the brook. Hi, Sandra. Thank you. You know, when I go out, it's just me. I have to worry about everything. When I go out with him, I feel like I don't even have to use my brain. Like, he just does everything. He takes care of everything. You know, buys everything. Communicates with everyone. Like, opens my door. I don't even have to do anything. <laughs> Yeah, for sure, Valley. Sometimes I do. Husbands have been forgiven for a lot worse things. Yeah. Being vegetarian? What do you mean? I know. It is annoying. I know. Sorry, guys. It's almost finished. <laughs> so this is an audience that is taking time out of their day to support Chantel's channel. They just let her know in her chat that she they were finding the shisha annoying. And she ended up saying, I know, I know, it's going to be my last one, which we know that's gaslighting and lies again, Chantel. And so what does she do? She turns around and smokes and blows this smoke through her nose directly at the screen of her audience. I would be done with this person at this point if I were an actual subscriber. And there's people actually sending her money in chats to celebrate her 100K that we know that she did not get in very legitimate ways. And so there's, it's a hollow celebration. It's a hollow victory, I guess, getting to that 100K. And it doesn't really give her anything. No company is going to reach out to you, Chantel, for a brand deal and hope that they can uh, get their products with you. You're not somebody that they would probably look out to. You have your cameos. And that's one of the things that you are able to do. But anyway, I'm just going to finish Chantel here because I don't think she talks about anything much more in these last 20 minutes of any significance. What we are seeing here from her is that she is still not managing her type 2 diabetes, that she is still wanting to eat takeout. 
a number of times a day, that she is not cooking at home, she doesn't enjoy cooking at home or the food that she really makes. She is smoking shisha. Uh, she is looking extremely diaphoretic, which is often a sign of uh, heart problems. And she did not even recognize it. And she uh, is showing high blood sugars, very, and taking them too soon after eating. So if that's how she's gauging it, and then she doesn't check for an, uh, at really at the time when you should, which is about two hours after, then you're not going to get a very accurate idea. Um, this is not the way to manage type 2 diabetes at all. But anyway, if you got this far, I really do appreciate it. And if you did get this far and you do want to drop a little emoji in the chat, Drop me a little kitty cat because we saw Julia and Julia looked like she was having fun. So if you got this far in my video, drop a little kitty cat. I would certainly appreciate that. So anyway, we're just going to take uh, good old Chantel off the stage here. I'm still hanging out over here in this lovely uh, apartment in Kuwait. I'm sure Chantel is going to release something uh interesting around food conversations around food conversations about how she's going to start a diet program the next day and then her continuation to gaslight her audience so we look forward to that all right guys we're gonna finish it out here and i will see you guys another time take care and if you like this type of comment again hit the likes hit the subscribe and drop that kitty cat in the comments